The NCAA Track and Field Championships are going to be up in Eugene, Oregon, uh, coming up this weekend. In fact, uh, Ashley has just arrived, we understand, up in Oregon. She is leading the way, competing in the 100-meter, the 200-meter, the 4-by-100-meter relay. And uh, she's one of the few women that have broken that 11-second barrier in the 100 meters. Ashley Henderson is on with the cannons. Hi, Ashley. How are you today? Hi, good. How are you? We are well, Ashley. Well, how exciting is this for you that you have had a great 2018 so far? It seems like you're peaking at the right time. What kind of expectations do you have for these NCAA championships? Um, I'm good. I mean, the only expectation I have for myself is to go out and do what I've been training ultimately so hard to do since August uh, with fall training. Um, I don't put too much pressure on myself. Again, I, I worked hard. I know it's there. So I just only expect myself to go and do what I ultimately know I can do. Ashley, this is coming from a guy you can, you know, time with a sundial in the 100 meters. So please be patient with me. Have you mm-hmm. always have you always been fast? Were you a fast kid, or is it something that you really had to work at and develop? Um, I've always had the talent. Um, I've been running track since I was seven years old, okay. so the talent has always been there. Um, now, since I've been on the collegiate level and I've came to San Diego State from St. Louis, Missouri, um, I just think the training and the coaching has just only increased. Um, again, I've been pretty talented all my life. Um, I never ran actually the times that I'm running now. Um, coming out of high school, my fastest time in 100 meters was about 11.8. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to now running my fastest yet far as a 10.96 and win legal 10.98. So you can kind of see the, the growth and development over the course of the time. But, yeah, like I said, um, coming out of high school, though, I wasn't – who I am though today. <laughs> Ashley, you, you mentioned that, uh, you know, with legal win, you, you ran ten nine eight. What was that like for you to break the 11 second barrier uh, without any wind aid, that it was a legal run of, of ten nine eight? What did that mean to you? For me, it meant everything because with track, you know, you, you run these times, but sometimes they may be a little windy, so it's not legal. And then you're kind of playing mind games with yourself. Like, well, did I really run that fast? Or was it the wind that was assisting me to run that fast? So when you get that legal time, then it, it kind of eases your mind where you know, like, okay, I ran that time. It was pretty much all me, no wind, nothing to help push me or assist me with the race. Like, that's pure talent that's there. And that, that just means a lot when you can win a win legal time. Ashley, how much of it is the pure physical talent and how much of it is what you have between your ears, the mental game? Um, see so with track and field, it's it's ninety percent like the physical is there mm-hmm. and then the rest of that ten percent is all like mental. Or actually no, it's actually all ninety percent mental and then that ten percent is all physical because we you know, we play so many mind games on ourselves or just these tricks on our minds that always appear and we always kind of you know, ultimately kind of doubt ourselves sometimes. And so we track and feel because you go into these levels where everybody's pretty much just as good as you are. Um, it's not really just, it's not the talent anymore. It's also just about that faith and that heart that you have in yourself that you have to ultimately develop and to have, and especially in this sport and really any sport, you just have to have that mental toughness. And um, I've been able to develop that strength over my journey of track and field so again like i said for track and field and especially for me it's more mental than the physical because again the physical is there you train the body to do what the body will and can do it's just all about making sure that that mental state will align with the body as well ashley henderson aztec track legend is joining us now ashley i know that after the ncaa championships you plan on turning pro and obviously you'll have your sights set on the olympic games coming up in 2020 you got a chance to compete in qualifying for the 2016 games but um Mm -hmm. that that experience and then you know again the thing that blows me away in a lot of sports track and field to me is the olympics always has been it was the original olympic sport and i know there are other sports the olympics personally i just watch the track and field but how do you get peaking at the right time i mean you got to go through the olympic trials i mean what is it going to be like for the next couple years for you as you focus in on the 2020 games, what kind of regiment do you plan on having? The only answer I can give to that is just keeping my faith in myself and in God because anything can happen. As long as we live, anything can happen. And um, 
as long as I continue to do me and focus on me, focus on my lane, focus on my races, and just like I said, focus on me and not get caught up in politics and everything else that does not ultimately matter, then that's for me going forward. Because going into the pro, merging onto the pro level, it's nothing that's going to change other than just the uniform that I wear on my chest. Um, my training obviously will probably increase just as it is going to happen when you go pro. But other than that, it's like, it's just for me, just staying to Ashley and doing what works and best for Ashley. You graduated last month. Congratulations, by the way. And, and, you. and you had on your mortar board, no more free races. How does, yeah. it, how does it work going pro? Do you, do you hire agent and then you just go do, do races or big meets and stuff, contact you and say, hey, we, we want to pay you some money to come on out? How does it work? <laughs> um, from my knowledge, you, you sign with a shoe brand and an agent, of course, and then um, you compete in some of the local meets, or you can also compete overseas, which track and field is kind of really bigger overseas, unless it's like the Olympic year or the world championship year. And so, of course, obviously when that comes around and that's what you train and prepare for then, but if it's not Olympic year or the world championship year, then you're just running at meets here throughout the U.S. Um, and then there's some other things that come with being professionalist courses, like appearances and all that other great stuff you get to do. But as far as the actual competition going, um, a lot of that is, again, either here in the, in the U.S. or also overseas. So a little bit of traveling to compete and then just waiting around, I guess, for the Olympic trials. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just one more thought on the uh, upcoming NCAA championships as you're already up there in Eugene. I love Eugene, Oregon, man. It's like mm -hmm. the track capital of the world. Of course, the trials are there, the Olympic trials mm -hmm. as well. Um, the 100 versus the 200. Uh, we always the, the hundred gets more attention. Uh, you actually ran at the two hundred at the trials uh, a year uh, two years mm -hmm. ago. Um, is there a race that you favor? Is there a race that you think you might be better at the hundred meter versus the two hundred meter? Um, not really. I mean, I I, I gotta say to everyone, I'm a hundred meter runner that runs the hundred the two hundred as well, and I'm a two hundred meter runner that runs the hundred meters as well. Um, but I don't think there's any race that I am best at just yet i haven't really seen which one i'm more better at um maybe throughout the rest of my track career maybe that may show and tell but as of right now i compete in both and i am very great and do very great in both events so yeah i i couldn't even tell you which one maybe like spectators probably think i'm better in one event than the other but <laughs> i think i'm ultimately pretty good in both what uh what leg of you are you in the relay um, I run the anchor leg. Of yeah, course. She's got to be the anchor leg. I, hey, I'm just – she could have been first. I don't know. Actually, Jesse Owens <laughs> ran first. Did you know that in the yeah. 36 games, even though he's the fastest? Well, Ashley, I'll tell you what. Um, what you've accomplished in your stay at San Diego State uh, is remarkable. When you look at how your times have decreased yeah. year after year, it's obviously you're heading in the right direction. Good luck this weekend yeah. at the NCAA Championships, Ashley. And, of course, we look forward to many, many more great races in the years to come. Yeah. Thanks for joining Thank us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, they, Ashley. Ashley Henderson. So look for her name this weekend. Again, she's running the 100 to 200. She'll be part of the Aztecs relay team. Now, truth be told, yeah. she called us. Mm. She'd heard of uh, <coughs> Canon Karma. Karma. <coughs> Excuse me. Something caught my throat.